Happy opening day to all those who celebrate. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I have been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now. I've done other things. I've worked in television. I've been a comedian. I'm now a teacher here in Los Angeles County. But what I really love is sharing my love of baseball with you via podcasting. I used to host the Sully Baseball Daily Podcast, and I've now been here at the Lockdown Podcast Network. This is my sixth season, and I'm loving every minute of it. Follow us at Lockdown and Milby Pods on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. If you are following us on all those sites and you want to leave any kind of comment, uh, let's just use that hashtag. Where is that hashtag? Use that hashtag every day, Sully, so I have an idea of who's listening every single day. Uh, and if you follow me on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now, uh, check out my pinned tweet, which is the In Memoriam video that I produced, which I do before every opening day now. And quickly, let's go through the trivia question. Uh, Paul Summendinger, the great doctor who helped us on the episode I did yesterday for Roy White from Compton to the Bronx. Uh, Roy White played his entire Major League Baseball career as a member of the New York Yankees, but he did play for one other team. And uh, Argonaut Comedy got it correct that he actually played a year with the Tokyo Giants. When he was done playing with the New York Yankees, he was one of the players who that, – that used to happen all the time, where you saw American players who had basically played out the string in the Major Leagues – Off they went to Japan to pick up some extra money, and uh, that's what Roy White did. I am recording this one, pulling back the curtain a tiny little bit. I am pulling back the curtain to tell you that I am recording this before the games start on Thursday. We're going to have basically a full slate of games going on. I'm sure, I think the Mets game may be already rained out. I could be wrong about that, but we're going to see the baseball games are going to start tomorrow. Now, yes, I know we had the two games that were played in Seoul, and those did indeed count. And, uh, you know, we're going to see, yeah, that's right, the Mets game and the Braves-Phillies game are are rained out already fine. But we're going to see, you know, Red Sox-Mariners, the D-backs and the Rockies, A's, Guardians, Rangers, Cubs, Astros, and the Yankees. That should be fun. Uh, Pirates are going to be playing the Miami Marlins. Tigers are playing the White Sox. The Dodgers resume their playing uh, with their home opener uh, with Tyler Glass now pitching against St. Louis. Uh, Tampa and Toronto are playing. The Twins and the Kansas City Royals play. And anytime you have an AL Central head-to-head, that's going to be interesting because that's a division that's totally up in the air. The two teams that want to win the NL West over the Giants or two more of the Giants over the Dodgers are going to be the Giants and the Padres. They're going to be opening in San Diego, Nats, Reds, and the Angels, and Baltimore with Burns making his first game for the Orioles. And probably by the time you're listening to this podcast, you'll already know what happened. But I wanted to record this episode beforehand, and we'll drop it sometime tomorrow, or sometime on Thursday when you'll be hearing this. I'm thinking about this. The season's starting. Yes, that's one reason I don't like starting the season and then stopping like they did in Seoul. I have no problem with them playing games overseas. I just think all the teams should open at the same time because opening day is special. I was thinking about this the other day. Why is this still such a special thing for me? I'm going to be 52 years old pretty soon. I've seen my favorite team, the Red Sox, win four World Series. My favorite national team is the San Francisco Giants. I've seen them win three times. So clearly, I'm not frothing at the mouth hoping to see my team win once before I die. 
that ship has sailed. Why is this still such an important thing for me? Besides the fact that I do the Lockdown Podcast Network, um, which is great, but what is it about that drives me to baseball? And for a lot of people, there are different reasons for their fandom. It is a huge sandbox that we all get to play in. Some people just want to follow a local team, and that's it. It's very binary. Did the Dodgers win? Did the Dodgers lose? Did the Giants win? Did the Giants lose? Did the A's win? Whoever whoever you follow, it's just binary. Did they win? They lose. It's just something very casual they do. Some people do that with all sports, or they have the one sport that they really follow. For me, it's baseball. Uh, and some people are interested in the stats. Some people are interested in fantasy. And we obviously have sponsors for those sort of things as well. I realize there's a couple reasons that drive me to this game. And if these aren't the same reasons that, that drive you to following a regular season, all 162 games and into the postseason, you may not have the same reasons. But I was thinking about it, and maybe we can all learn to share this a little bit. I know a lot of people who focus on fantasy baseball use a phrase and which is forget the narrative, forget the narrative, focus on the numbers. And that's fine if that's how you enjoy the game. But one of the reasons that I love the game is the narrative, is the fact that it's a story that unfolds. And it's not a short story. It's one that takes several months to unfold. And you think you know where it's going and it goes in different directions and all over the place. I have so many books around, just even around my computer, which are baseball history books, because I love reading about the history of baseball. I love the, you know, my background is, is covered with pictures of the history of baseball, and I love the story of it. I love to see how the story unfolds. I love to see the plot twists. I love to see the characters who change, the teams who take over, the great moments, the bad moments, the stupid moments, the glorious moments, and the fact that when it's happening in real time, it's truly exhilarating for me because I don't know where it's going to go. When you look back in retrospect, which I love, as I said, I love reading about baseball history. I am always consuming a baseball history book somewhere. And like right now on my writing project with the 71 World Series, I know how that one ended. And it's still thrilling for me to read about, knowing how the A's wound up beating the Reds or thing I'm reading right now about the 33 World Series, which I know that the Giants are going to win over Washington. But to see how everything unfolds, see how that crazy season unfolds, is is exhilarating to read about the ones that you know how they end. But to be in the middle of a season where you don't know how it ends. Think about last year. Think about all the twists and turns that we had last year. The beginning of the year, Tampa Bay looked absolutely unstoppable. They, they won all those games at the beginning of the year. And then it looked like the Yankees were going to have a great season, especially with the way that Garrett Cole was playing. But then suddenly you had that injury involving Aaron Judge. You saw the Yankees spiral out. Everyone thought the Mets were going to be great, but they spiraled out. And then you saw Arizona be terrific for a giant chunk of the season until they absolutely made a nosedive in the going into the end of the season. And they backed into the playoffs and to everyone's amazement, they wound up winning the pennant. It looked like for a while, was Baltimore going to be the big story? Was the Dodgers, was the NLCS going to be an inevitable collision between the Dodgers and and the Braves, and then there were people like Corbin Carroll that who had years that you weren't expecting. You had the whole weird, are they going to trade Otani? Are they not going to trade Otani? Is Otani hurt? Is Otani not hurt? Is Jacob DeGrom hurt? What's going to happen as Texas and Arizona were both sputtering out of control with the horrible stretches in, in August and September, only to be the main story at the end of October? And in many ways, the big narrative at the end of the 2023 season was Bruce Bochy coming back and the Rangers winning their first ever championship. This year is going to be filled with twists and turns like that. And there's going to be moments of frustration, like with A's fans knowing what's 
the the craziness going on with the team. And last year you had the narrative of the reverse boycott. And then you also had things like the new Orioles management. What's going to happen with the A's going into this year? The death of Tim Wakefield, the death of Brooks Robinson. There are always twists and turns to the story. And the sitting back and knowing that I'm about to have basically a new baseball book whose ending I do not know and whose ending you don't know. And there's someone waking up today who doesn't realize that when the final moment of the season happens and the victory parade goes on for the World Series champion, they don't realize that they are the main story of 2024. Seeing how it unfolds, the thrill of finding out how the season unfolds is something that really drives me to baseball because it unfolds over a long period of time and requires patience, but that patience is rewarded. But there's more than that. It's more than just my love of a great story being told. In so many ways, there are other elements to the game that, quite frankly, pepper it with more than just, I want to see a great story unfold. There's something deeper and more profound, and one that, frankly, is worth bringing up, because I wonder how many people agree with me on this reason, to love the experience of a season. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You could even pick who's going to win it all. Is it going to be Washington State? Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. That's FanDuel. Are you watching some of those sports networks like Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring the biggest story without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Day brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. I try not to scream on that one. There's another thing that drives me to this game because it fills a part of my life that other people have this fulfillment elsewhere. Uh, I don't talk a lot about uh, certain things in my personal life, but I will say I am not a religious person. Uh, I'm not a believer. I, I am not ashamed to call myself an atheist, but I also am not proud of it. It's just a fact. I don't believe in the supernatural, and I'm also not a religious person. That's not my my bag. I know many of you are, and I respect your beliefs, and I respect how you unfold your life. I know for a fact there are people who have been guests on my show, especially you know, H-Town Wheelhouse from Lockdown Astros is a very religious guy. I know a lot of you who follow me, many denominations of Christianity, uh, several forms of Judaism. I know I have several Muslim listeners. I know I have a few Buddhist listeners. I even know that I, I do have a Scientology listener. Yeah, I sometimes check on the everyday Sully uh, profiles and one person is a scientist. Whatever it is that gives you happiness, okay, I'm not going to get in the way of. Uh, however, I feel that many of the positive things that people get from their faith and their religion, I actually do get from baseball. I get the sense of community. That's certainly a positive thing that when the you know, the good elements of religion is that sense of community. Uh, a lot of times people are their religion because of a connection to their ancestors. Well, 
I certainly have a connection to my parents and to my grandparents and our love of baseball. It's something that connects all of us. Uh, and a lot of times it's based upon your family and where you grew up, what religion you're in or what team you root for. Uh, it's usually this is the, the, the team I was raised in or where I'm growing up. This is where what we do and where we go. Both have rituals, whether it's wearing the hat or if you go to Anaheim, watching the monkey jumping up and down or, you know, the rally caps or uniforms or singing Sweet Caroline or doing the roll call from the bleachers. These are all rituals that are comforting. Oh, I went there. My father went here and did that. I'm now going there and doing that. You know, rally caps, foam, we're number one fingers. Maybe tomahawk chalk. Some of you like it. Some of you don't. But it's certainly a ritual that has been handed down. And that's that sense of community is a positive thing. Of course, there are negative things can happen in a religion, just like there's negative things that happen in a fandom. And we've seen sometimes people getting into fights because you're rooting for the wrong team. Obviously, there was the horrible story that happened a decade ago of the Giants fan beaten up so badly in the Dodger parking lot that he was basically in a coma. And that's based upon conflicting beliefs. We don't want that. We don't want conflicting religious beliefs. We don't conflicting fandom. And both require faith. Faith is, at least the definition that I use, is believing in something without evidence. And most religious claims of supernatural or spiritual or whatever requires faith. Because if it didn't, then it would be science then we would just have evidence. You got to have faith in this. You have to have faith in that. I don't know if I have any religious faith, but I know I have baseball faith. I know there are times I can watch my team go and I believe they have a shot to win, even though in my heart of hearts, I have no evidence for it. I believe, I have to put in and believe despite all of the contrary evidence that I see that maybe what I'm wishing for and what will bring me happiness can come true. And sometimes it doesn't. And those days you say, baseball works in mysterious ways. But that's part of what is in some people's lives. And while I may not have it in a church or a mosque or synagogue, I do have it in a place of worship. I do feel that when I go to a ball game and I feel a connection to the past. I feel a connection with my fellow fans. I feel a connection that we're all wishing and hoping and clasping our hands together, trying to get something to happen the way we want it to and that we believe in it. There are the official video of the 2004 Red Sox was called Faith Rewarded. I understand that feeling. And while I'm not a believer and I'm not a religious person, I do like to think I'm a good person who does good things. And I don't feel like that's a hole in my heart and a hole in my life. I have found it in another way. And is it always rational? No, but neither is faith. Is it always justified? No, but neither is faith. And I feel when I see someone who is wearing a hat or the uniform of the team that I'm rooting for, I feel I have a connection. And like those people who go and to different uh, temples or mosques or churches to see how other people worship, I find myself in many other homes of worship. And I know to be respectful for that. If I'm in someone else's home and I'm wearing a Red Sox hat, I know I'm not going to rub it in their face. I'm in your place of faith. And I don't feel like I'm losing out in my life because I have that. And baseball provides that to me. But there's one other thing that is more tangible than stories and faith 
which in so many ways I realize is the main reason why I'm a baseball fan. Hey, did you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube? And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. Do you know what baseball in so many ways provides you for these 162 games friendship friendship in so many different ways certainly amongst other fans uh i am going to a red sox angels game in just a couple of weeks i bought my ticket on game time not a sponsor of today's episode and i'm going to go down to anaheim and i'm going to go alone i'm going to go by myself but i'm not going to be alone I'm going to be amongst friends. Some will be Angel fans. Some will be Red Sox fans. Some just will be baseball fans. But there's going to be a connection. If I go down there, we're, there's going to be, well, it's an otani Los Angel game. So let's be generous and say it'll be about 30,000 people. And we all have something in common. And believe me, there'll be an Orange County. There's going to be a lot of people who are of the right wing of politics. There's going to be a lot of people of the left wing of politics. And yet we'll have a friendship there. We'll all have something in common. If I go to a bar, if I go to a place where they're showing a a ball game, I can go there and not know anybody and walk away being friendly with people. That We have this sense, this connection. I know I feel friendship with a lot of the hosts here, the Lockdown Podcast Network, uh, of which I've met a grand total of zero in person. I know some of you who follow this podcast, some of the Everyday Sully listeners, I feel that they are my friends in so many ways. And I'm sure there's a certain connection that we feel with the players. If you watch the In Memoriam video that I dropped, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's my pinned tweet. If you go to Twitter and follow me at Sully Baseball. The last line of the video is Brooks Robinson saying, I've never thought of you as being fans. I thought of you as being my friends. It's a beautiful sentiment, I must say. And it's something I'm sure we all feel when we watch a team. And in so many ways, that's what people who don't understand why it's so important to have, if you're a baseball fan, to be following the team day in and day out. It's not necessarily always going to be about winning the World Series. Only one team can do that. It's they're your friends for that spring and for that summer. They're your companions. You check in on them. You listen to the games. You watch the games. You watch as many as you can. And you root for them day in and day out. They could win on Wednesday and lose on Thursday. It's not always about winning. It's about how did they do? Who did well? You check the box score. It's very clear who did well. You see who pitched well. You see who hit well. And you get to know the players. And you get to know the relievers. And sometimes some of the people who you feel a great connection to aren't necessarily the big superstars. Jimmy Parr, the great podcaster of Never Not Funny, the best podcast out there. And his favorite player as a rabid Chicago White Sox fan was Alan Bannister, not one of their big superstars, not one of the big all-stars. And there were a lot of all-stars on those White Sox team of the late 70s. My favorite player was Butch Hobson. You get attached to players. You get attached to the middle relievers, and they're your companions for the spring and the summer and into the fall. And you're really lucky they'll go deep into October. But the, for the most part, they're your companions and they're your friends. And basically, when they go away at the end of the regular season or at the end of the World Series, it's like you're missing your friends who you saw a lot. And then now we're seeing them again, which is one reason why I love opening day. It's a reunion with your friends. And it's important to get that distance. 
it's important to say goodbye knowing that they're going to be coming back. And sometimes it's a new group of friends. Sometimes your really good friend is now wearing another uniform, but you get to meet somebody new. And sometimes the team stinks. And sometimes the team is not competitive. I'm a Red Sox fan. Do you notice the year I have up there? Is it 04 or 07 or even 86? No, it's 82. And I bet I can name everybody on that 82 roster. And that team didn't do piddly poo. They came in third. They were good. They weren't great. But I followed them all year. And think about some of the teams that you have that didn't win the World Series, that didn't win the pennant. But you really love watching them day in and day out. And sometimes they're bad teams that you get attached to. Sometimes they're competitive teams. You're just happy they did well. So why do I love it? You get a great story that unfolds over a bunch of months. I get a chance to fill the void of faith and ritual and and community that some people get from their religion. And you get friends, friends who you watch on the game, some that you listen to. I mean, your announcers in so many ways are your friends as well. They're the ones watching the game with you. That's why Vin Scully said, if you're just joining us, pull up a chair. A lot of times when my dad, when he wanted to turn on the Giants game, he wouldn't say turn on the Giants game. He would say turn on Crook and Kipe. And they're wonderful announcers out there. You know, Don Arcillo is fantastic. And then you have Jason Benetti, who was the White Sox announcer, and now is over the Detroit Tigers. He's one of the best in the business. And whomever you're following, do you know what? They're your friends at that moment. And so here we start, 162 games of a story, of faith, and a friendship. We'll break down the games and we'll talk numbers and everything like that. But I realize those are the reasons why I have it. I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. I don't think my team has a shot. I have faith that they'll do well because that's what you have at the beginning of the year. But here's what I want to see. I want to see a great story unfold. I want to see twists and turns. I want to see players you're not expected contribute big time. And teams that you thought were going to go great fall on their face only to get them stand up and dust themselves off. I want a great story. I want a great sense of community with you all experiencing it. And I want to make some friends. And I'm going to be doing this all season long. Uh, Today's trivia question is around, I think, the best team or the most complete team I may have ever seen in my life. And it breaks my heart to say it was a New York Yankee team. And that team was the 1998 New York Yankees who stampeded to the World Series, stampeded to a wonderful year where they basically ran over the entire, uh, all of Major League Baseball to finish the season 114 and 48 and sweep a very good San Diego Padres team. The trivia question is, what was the Yankees record in 1998 after five games how did they do in their first five games that's a trivia question put it down here on youtube or put it at lockdown mlb pods on twitter or on instagram and i'm your pal sully with sully baseball on twitter sully baseball podcast on instagram thank you my friends for joining me to see this story unfold and to test our faith this has been locked on mlb happy opening day everyone I'm yours, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.